Am I alone? I mean, are there any other male victims or men that are targeted, such as myself, um, where they have had their their partner lie and use falsified evidence in court, get away with it, and other weapons as such to keep their children away from them, to keep, to keep my own children away from me so I can't see my kids. Is there any other cases where a mother would use makeup to create an image of a black eye, a so-called black eye, which is so bloody blatantly obvious that it's petrifying, that it's a fake black eye, and it's on the border of, it's on the borderline of laughing at or crying at, it's pathetic. You're told by the police that, oh, we can't do anything about it because it hasn't run through the court process system. But when it does go through the court process system, please come come back and see us. And, you know, she'll be charged with either perjury or falsified evidence or tampering with evidence. And so then you're patient and you wait. And you wait for that day prepared where you have a calculated idea that she will be using this falsified image due to the fact that this falsified image has a date and is time stamped on the back of the photograph as to when it was taken. And this date being the closest date when compared to the other images, the closest date to the alleged event of where she allegedly was injured or bruised and was a victim of so-called domestic violence. So being prepared, being very prepared, approaching the prosecutor, showing the prosecutor this photo and pleading with the prosecutor that when this image is brought out by by the lawyer and shown to my ex-partner, please be prepared for this moment so that you can object and question. Question the integrity of this photo. Question the, the, the truth, the blatant, the pathetic makeup that's used on this image, not once telling the prosecutor, not twice, not three times, but four times as this hearing went for for about six hours, kindly reminding this prosecutor that this image will be used. And when this image is used, you get happy because you think, wow, awesome. The prosecutor's got her. He's, go he's, go he's going to get her. That's it. She's gone. He's going to object to her. It's going to be so obvious. And it's going to be a great day. And this will help to, to, to get me see my children and provide the family court with clarity on as to what is really going on and some truth as to what's really going on. But, the prosecutor doesn't ask a single question, doesn't even object at all, nothing. Then the prosecutor has the decency to even ask me in the final minutes of the court, do we have anything else to, to ask or to add? Is there anything else that you want to add? And I make a note and tell him 
Yes, please. The, the photo. You, you didn't ask about the photo. That's falsified evidence. Whereas the prosecutor responds with a stiffened lip, stiffened upper lip, as in shut the bloody hell up and get back to your seat. And when the court case is finished, arms, he, the prosecutor's arms are held out and he approaches you, pulls his right hand out towards you to shake your hand and say, these things happen, these, these things happen all the time. Yeah, I'm sure these things happen all the time. I'm really, really sure, I'm certain these things happen all the time. Because people make falsified photos of falsified injuries all the time. I'm really, really sure about that. Um, I've got no trust in the court process system anymore. I mean, in the local court. The local court. From the local court, I have no trust how am I supposed to enter any other courtroom if I can't even trust the local courtroom and the people that are supposed to be representing you so that you can have justice? So justice can be served to the community where you a where you are a victim. And the truth of the matter is no one really cares. So what do you do? What do you do when no one's upholding the law? I mean, going a man going his own way, becoming a man going his own way is, is great. Because I expected, for some reason, I, uh, you, always, uh, you always hope for the best, but you expect the worst. You know, knowing that it's a gynocentric system, it's a man-hating environment, and yeah, you, you learn from other men in the manosphere of their experiences. I've got two children. And I have spoken to another mate of mine. Um, he's got two children. And the thing is, one of the children, one of his children like him, one of his children completely dislikes him and it, it, it's really sad because there's evidence to there's evidence available that, that allows you if you really wanted to to get to the truth the complete truth not the so-called facts that they that they mention in court what's the fact oh, the fact of the matter is no that's not a fact that's not a fact what is the truth? What was on the recording? For example, you can't change what was on a recording or what's in a video or what's in a photo. You can tell a story about a photo, but you can't change what's in a video. These are true facts. But the court doesn't apply these rules. The court, the court doesn't function in this manner. It just allows a so-called victim or a so-called defendant to give a story. And whilst these stories are being, you know, they're like transactions. There's a deposit, there's a withdrawal or a withdrawal and a deposit. There's punches being thrown at each other. But it, but it seems like the decision was made before you even walked into that courtroom why would a prosecutor tell me not to not not to come back after lunch to just just leave it's okay you don't need to stay here anymore but i insisted on staying in that courtroom i mean i went on a had lunch and i came back and that's when it became very very apparent that the outcome of what was to happen in the court was already was already made was already written they had made a de decision before before the courtroom had even begun 
I mean, this is just a small window uh, of an event that has occurred after the recording slash of the up uh, the uploading of the video that I've uploaded, which is paying with paying with your blood. So I just thought I'd share that with everybody. Um, I will be disclosing everything. I will be disclosing everything. Right now, I can only disclose things that are packaged in a certain way um, due to the fact I don't want to get charged with Section 121. I mean, I'm considering it, but right now I haven't made up my mind. I don't want to get charged with Section 121.